It's my pleasure to call the member for Vaucluse for her valedictory speech. Here, here. Here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The 1850s portrait of William Charles Wentworth is staring down at us now from the wall in this chamber. He was a colourful character. Wentworth played a big role in the colonial history of New South Wales and Sydney's eastern suburbs in particular. The electorate of Vaucluse took its name from his large ancestral property, Vaucluse House, which then covered the local suburbs of Vaucluse, Rose Bay and Watsons Bay. When I delivered my inaugural speech in 2011, Wentworth's portrait was being refurbished and the wall was bare. I said that when his portrait was returned to this chamber, he would see how our Liberals, Nationals government had transformed our great state. And indeed, he has. Mr Speaker, colleagues and friends, I rise to speak tonight conscious of the honour I have had of serving as the member for Vaucluse since 2011. I entered this House when the Liberals and Nationals took government in New South Wales in a landslide election. I've had almost 12 amazing years representing the electorate of Vaucluse, serving as a minister in government across six portfolios and as parliamentary secretary to two premiers. Most proudly, I served as both the first female attorney general and the first female liberal sports minister in New South Wales. And at this point, I want to note that it was our government, a liberal nationals government, who not only appointed the first female attorney general in New South Wales, but also the first female treasurer and the first female speaker of the Legislative Assembly. On this side of the house, we get things done. Mr Speaker, let me say what a privilege it has been to play a part in the transformation of our great state through almost 12 years of good government. New South Wales has new schools, hospitals, roads, buses, ferries and wharves, stadiums and record investment into our justice system and our national parks estate. Prior to 2011, businesses had shifted their investments outside of New South Wales and we had near to the bottom rankings for economic performance amongst other Australian states and territories. New South Wales is now the place where businesses invest. People find jobs. New South Wales is truly the best place in the world to live, to work and to raise a family. The government's radical transformation of this state has only been possible through strong, consistent and courageous leadership, through setting priorities and making tough decisions. It's like turning around a grand ocean liner it takes a team of people over time all pulling in the right direction. And I'm proud to have contributed to the transformation. But it's not only the, the contribution that you make, but I think it's how you make that contribution. And politics more than any other vocation means you need a set of values, a moral compass. I often walked through the John F. Kennedy Memorial Park when I was recently studying at Harvard Business School. On the fountain, there is an inscription from the President-elect's 1961 speech to the Massachusetts State Legislature, which makes that point. And it says, when at some future date, the High Court of History sits in judgment on each one of us, our success or failure in whatever office we hold will be measured by the answers to four questions. Were we really people of courage? Were we really people of judgment? Were we really people of integrity? And were we really people of dedication? So colleagues and friends, I've certainly tried to live those values through my contribution. Whether I succeed is up to others to judge. But what I do know is that I've given everything to this calling. My heart, my energy, my passion. And you know, I've loved every minute of it. Well, almost every minute. <laughs> but, that, but that said, I know in my heart that this is the right time to leave. It's time for me to do something else and it's definitely time for someone to take my place. I came to this role as a lawyer, a banker. I'd been a university deputy chancellor. I'd worked for not-for-profits as a director on their boards and I'd worked overseas in the US and in the UK. 
And I believe that more people with diverse backgrounds should run for political office, like they do in the US. We need as many different perspectives as we can get inside government. And we also need the perspectives of people who served in government working inside business and not-for-profits, and not just in those traditional government affairs roles. We have a lot to gain from our three sectors, government, business, not-for-profit, better understanding one another and working with one another. It is the best way to address the big challenges in our community. It's been a privilege to serve as a minister, a truly humbling experience. And I always tried to focus on making the everyday lives of people in New South Wales a little better. I wanted to thank all the public servants who've helped me do that, along with my colleagues. My first ministry was sport and recreation. And to this day, my family says it was their best portfolio. <laughs> I met elite athletes who are inspiring. But you know who the real heroes are? They're the volunteers. They turn up day in and day out, and they keep our community sport running. We must never forget that all sporting excellence grows from that base. And it's been rewarding to see the extra muscle that community sport now has through our government's once-in-a-lifetime investments into stadiums and community sporting facilities. This is vital for our girls and our women who've historically been underserved by facilities. They also need practical support and that's why, just in the last while, I've been proud to be part of the Minerva Network, which is a group of senior women who mentor female athletes, preparing them for their post-competition careers. As the first female Attorney General in New South Wales, I was grateful to introduce the Specialist Child Sexual Assault Pilot Scheme, which reduced the trauma experienced by child victims in sexual assault proceedings by allowing them to give their evidence pre-recorded in the absence of a jury, to be supported by specially trained and accredited communication specialists, who we call children's champions, during their interviews with police and in the court, and to have their cases heard by specialist child sexual assault district court judges. These really important reforms were mirrored by ones to better support women experiencing domestic and family violence. For many of us, the murders in Barrowville 30 years ago of three Aboriginal children, Colleen Walker Craig, Evelyn Greenup and Clinton Speedy Duroe, was a stain on our community. The families had endured pain and suffering for over a quarter of a century and access to our justice system was beyond their reach. Through circumstances fortuitously that occurred while I held the pen as Attorney General, we were able to give the families the opportunity to argue for a retrial in the New South Wales Court of Criminal Appeal. Although this would not bring their children back, it unlocked, it unlocked a door to the justice system that had been firmly shut. And I have with me here, forgive me, Mr Speaker, they are a prop, but they're an important prop, um, the three wristbands that the family gave me during that time, one honouring each child. Ultimately, an appeal for leave to the High Court was not granted, thereby ending any prospects of a retrial. The result was not the one they wanted, but the justice system had done its job. Through my role as Attorney General, I grew an even greater respect for our police, our heads of court jurisdiction and legal profession. I had the privilege of working closely with the former New South Wales Chief Justice the wonderful Honourable Tom Bathurst AC, the Chief Judge of the District Court, the Honourable Justice Derek Price AO, who still serves in that role, former Police Commissioner Andrew Scipione AO, APM, and the wonderful Director of Public Prosecutions, Lloyd Babb, just to name a few. They are amongst the real giants in our community. They do their work, sometimes unknown to anybody else. I believe that we should be proud of our New South Wales justice system it serves us very well. As a child, my father took me on weekends with our cans and our bottles to the Alexandria Recycling Depot. It was a remarkable effort on his part, given, given that back in the 70s, recycling wasn't very common and the depot was actually quite a distance away from where I live close to Centennial Park. Our childhood experiences are indelible. And now I drive my own family crazy with recycling 
whether it's food or coffee cups or soft plastics. And so understandably, as Minister for the Environment, I was proud to introduce Return and Earn, the New South Wales Container Deposit Scheme. Return and Earn encourages people to recycle their drink containers by offering ten, a 10 cent refund for depositing those containers at a return site across New South Wales. Before Return and Earn, there were more than 160 million drink containers littering our streets and our beaches and our parks every year. Now, I've got to say, introducing that scheme was not easy. A change to an industry model never is, believe me. But now, over 8.3 billion containers have been recycled. 8.3 billion containers. And over 35 million has been raised through the scheme as donations for charities, schools and sporting groups. It is a success. I've always been passionate about knowledge and ideas. They are the key to curing our diseases, creating new industries and jobs, and creating a better future for our community. And one of the places where ideas are born, of course, is in our universities. After the 2011 election, I was appointed by former Premier Barry O'Farrell as Parliamentary Secretary for Tertiary Education and Skills. And we rolled back red tape so our universities could better focus on building knowledge and ideas. One example was making it easier for them to focus on strategy at their board levels through, through reducing their board size. And all universities, I'm glad to say, have now taken up that option. In my inaugural speech, I said that ideas that come from research need to be better supported, that government funding should be leveraged to support research and business partnerships, and that we should locate our businesses, our research institutes, and our universities together so that they can exchange ideas. As Parliamentary Secretary to the Premier, I also made the case that our government needed to focus on soft infrastructure, ideas to drive our economy, alongside our wonderful building that we've done in hard infrastructure. I'm really grateful to former Premier Gladys Berejiklian and Premier Dom Perrottet for backing my work in this area. It included the 2021 launch of the Turning Ideas into Jobs Action Plan, which is, has accelerated the translation and commercialisation of research, working with our startups, our scale-ups and our small businesses. And we are now using our large procurement budget in the New South Wales Government, our 20-year R&D roadmap, and our precincts, Tech Central, Westmead and Eritropolis, to drive innovation, to create jobs and new industries in New South Wales. I want to thank the Advisory Council of Business and Academic Leaders and Entrepreneurs, chaired by David Gomsky AC, for guiding this work. I want to acknowledge my collaborator and very dear friend, our Chief Scientist and Engineer, Hugh Durrant-White. We achieved a lot without a portfolio, a new government department, a new ministry, and over now $500 million invested into that action plan. Additionally, I want to acknowledge over the term of my career here, my long-term partnership with the innovation sector stakeholders, and in particular with our innovation leadership. I did want to acknowledge the Vice-Chancellor of Western Sydney University, Barney Glover, who joins us here today. You know, these achievements would not have been possible without that strong partnership, and I believe New South Wales would be worse off. The Vaucluse electorate is full of natural beauty, rich in character and history, all 24 square kilometres. <laughs> Our community is diverse. It's enterprising. Over 40% of our residents are born overseas, compared with 35% across the state. 40% are professionals, double the state average. I'm proud we have the largest Jewish community in New South Wales. And I want to express my deep appreciation to the community for their friendship the Rabbinate, the New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies leadership who are here today, and the many, many cultural and community service organisations. That community is an exemplar one, if ever there was one. Friends and colleagues, I have stood with my local community to protect all those precious things. I've delivered on my inaugural speech pledges, and we've achieved many more things together, including upgrades to our public transport network, local schools, parks, hospitals, cycleways, roads, and better protecting our natural environment and heritage. And together we made it through the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. There are so many local wins, and I want to highlight some of them. 
At the top of the list, I'm so proud that we got $80 million to close the wastewater outfalls at Diamond Bay and Vaucluse. We are ending decades of untreated wastewater being pumped into our ocean, meaning cleaner beaches and better protection for our marine life. The State Heritage listed Vaucluse treasure, Strickland House Estate, and I acknowledge Peter Poland, who has joined us here today, um, who has been such an advocate together with his wife um, over many years for uh, what we were able to achieve together, which was transferring Strickland House Estate into the National Parks Estate. It is now protected in perpetuity. Along with state heritage listings for Nielsen Park, the Hermitage Walk, Rushcutters Bay Park, the Rose Bay Seawall and Promenade, I could go on. We have a new ferry wharf at Rose Bay. Upgraded ferry wharves are underway at Double Bay and Darling Point and over 150 additional and extended ferry services, giving residents a quicker and more enjoyable world, world way to travel. There is now an eastbound clearway on New South Head Road, reducing travel times for motorists to get to work, take their children to school and get home. And I'm also passionate about making it safer for cyclists on our roads. I am a cyclist after all, and we have new cyclists, cycleways and cyclists, with more to come, I'm happy to say. 26 million in New South Wales government funding created disability access, including lifts at Edgecliff Station, giving residents easier, safer access between the train, the shops and the bus station at our major transport hub. Belvey Hill Public School received a $17 million upgrade. Four extra classrooms were delivered for Bondi Public School and multi-purpose sports courts and covered outdoor learning areas for Rose Bay Secondary College, with more to come. An investment was made into North, North Bondi Surf Life Saving Club for their iconic clubhouse. And now I've been pleased to support Bondi Surf Bathers Life Saving Club so they can also have the best facilities to do the important job of saving lives on our famous Bondi Beach. There is much more to say, but I must now turn to thank the people who've made my journey possible. From the very beginning, there was the former member for Vaucluse, Rosemary Foote AO, the first woman to serve in a leadership position in the New South Wales Liberal Party. Chris McDivan, AM, the first female president of the Liberal Party. And Jesse Bartos, my first branch president, the most important person of all. I am deeply grateful to the Liberal Party and to the Vaucluse State Electorate Conference. To the ever loyal and passionate president, Janet MacDonald AO, and her wonderful husband, Donald MacDonald AC, and treasurer, Daryl Hughes, honourable, dependable, and his wonderful wife, Dixie. Thank you to my conference executive, to branch members, of which there are many, liberal councillors, including the indomitable councillor Sally Betts, and the former member for Wentworth, Dave Sharma, who's joined us here today. Although Vaucluse is a safer seat, we never took it for granted. I never took it for granted. We worked hard on every campaign. Mm. And at the last election in 2019, we won every booth. To David Gonski, AC, who's always been there for me at the right time with wise encouragement. To the Honourable Robert Webster, to Charles Curran, AC, Bruce Morgan, Phil Marcus Clark, AO, Professor Mary O'Kane, AC, and David Thody, AO, thank you all for your strategic advice and practical support. To all my parliamentary colleagues, many of whom have joined in the chamber today, including former colleagues, the Honourable Gladys Berejiklian, the Honourable Mike Baird and the Honourable Greg Pearce, thank you all for your encouragement in so many ways. To my ministerial and electorate office staff, wow, what an amazing ride we've had and we've had some fun too. You are all exceptional and you're here today. There are so many of you and I pay tribute to the long-termers. Wow, they put up with me for a long time. Kevin Wilde, Michaela O'Rourke, Donna Blackburn, Jen Zinn, who's the most outstanding SEO, and Carol Freeman, thank you. You're much more wise than I am. I wanted to make special mention of all the parliamentary staff and the wonderful clerk, Helen Minikin, who somehow, somehow makes this place work despite all the chaos that we create. To be in politics, you need the strong support of your family. And so it is because of my dearest loving husband, Alex. I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> my handsome son, Nicholas, 
and my gorgeous daughter Georgina that I'm here today. You know, Nicholas and Georgina, you're now young adults. You were not when I started here 11 years ago. And it is truly the joy of my life to watch you now finding your own paths as young adults. To my mother and father, Marion Warwick, who worked so hard to provide me with the opportunities I've had here. To my three siblings, um, thank you for your commitment to our small, close-knit family. To my parents-in-law, to Mickey, who sadly passed away several months ago, and to Dragana, who is here today, Thank you for your love and support over more than 30 years. Mr Speaker, I am very optimistic about the future of this great state under the Liberal Nationals government and Premier Dom Perrottet's leadership. Dom is a reformer. He's a person of values and determination. And I will strongly support him and our team going forward. Indeed, more of that in a moment. You know, our government is a good government. Our government is a good government. Under our stewardship, New South Wales is now a place where every person, irrespective of their background and circumstances, has the best opportunities to live, to work and raise a family. And long may that continue. Thank you, Mr Speaker.